Ruth chapter one, reading from verses, verse six through to the end. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her. And they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her daughters-in-law, go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as he has dealt as he have dealt with the dead and with me the lord grant you that he may find rest each of you in the house of her husband and she kissed them and they lifted up their voice and wept and they said unto her surely we will return with thee unto thy people and naomi said turn again my daughters why will he go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would he tarry for them till they were grown? Would he stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from the following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people and thy God, my God. Where thou diest, will I die and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her and she left speaking unto her. So the they two went until they came to Bethlehem. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem that all the cities was moved about them. And they said, is this Naomi? And she said unto them, call me not Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full and the Lord had brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. Here ended the reading of the book of Ruth chapter one from verse six through to the end. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader and hearer of his own holy words. In, in all honesty, I don't, I don't, I think I really have a subject of the sermon to present to you this morning. However, I pray that you will find something that is just for you. And when you find that something, then you will be able to come up with your very own subject. 
because I may take something from it that, you know, say Angie might find something different. So, you know, we could, we could have different subjects, but I pray you will find something. And if I really had to narrow it down and present a topic like I have seen, you know, our, our preachers do, I would have to say something about uh, returning home, returning home. But I think about Naomi, I think about someone knowing God, but still being far away from him. I hope most of us would understand what that means. Perhaps you've had the experience of drifting away from God. You never thought it would happen, but somewhere along the line, you, you might have made a wrong choice or a wrong decision, and we start to, to just drift and drift and drift. And then before we know it, the connection that we used to have, that connection is no longer there. This can happen, saints. It, it, can, mat it can, can happen no matter who you are or, or what position you may be in. I, I could be, you know, I might, I might be a sister elder or the elders or the deacon, but you can still drift. You could be the, the chorister or the shepherd, but you could still know God, but be far away from him. It is possible to know him, but yet be far from him. And when we read about Naomi, you know, 10 years have passed since she and her husband and their two sons left Bethlehem for the fields of Moab. You know, they left due to the famine. And if you don't read, if you don't know the story, I, I encourage you, please just read those four chapters of Ruth. You will find some enlightenment. You will find some encouragement. But they left because of famine with a possibly intention of returning back home. Their intentions were good, but nothing worked as they intended. Naomi's husband died, and her two sons also died. And my question is, what do you do when your whole world seems to be falling apart? What do you do? In the scripture, we see the words that appear so many times, the word turn and the word return. We see it multiple times throughout the, uh, the scripture. And you know, turn could just, turn could mean, you know, literally turning around, literally changing direction. But it could also mean to turn spiritually, turning spiritually around, you know, turning away from the sinful ways and returning back to the Lord. When Naomi started her journey back to Bethlehem, she's not only changing directions, but she's also turning her life around spiritually. After living in Moab in a pagan land for 10 years, she now turns to her own people and to the God of our salvation. It's a literal and spiritual journey in which the bruised believer takes this long journey home. She had several choices. She could have stayed in Moab and be that stranger in a strange land, or she could have returned form back to Bethlehem to be amongst her people. And I believe the decision was, was really made for her, especially when she heard the good news that there was no bread in Bethlehem. With the famine over the way, it was now clear for Naomi to return. But what about Orpah and Ruth? What do they do? 
I only believed it would, it would be better for them to re just re return to their homes. I, I, I really don't think she was being unkind. But at this point, she appears to have that feeling of emptiness. Emptiness. So why drag, why drag these two daughters with her deep into a very own misery? That, that empty feeling saying, if I, if I could just speak to you for a little bit. This is so personal, this em that empty feeling. Being able to explain this empty feeling, I know it. I know this empty feeling says that it's, it's not a feeling of being tired. It's, it's different. If I could explain this feeling to you, it's like physically I am here. Physically I am here, but I have no connection with what is going on around me. I am here, but I am not here. My body is here, but, but, but my, my mind is not here. I am not connected. I am disconnected. You have no desire for anything, says this feeling of emptiness is, is so raw because I know this feeling of emptiness. And I know, I, I can imagine what Naomi was going through because she felt like she had no hope. And I know what it feels like when there is no hope. Yes, I know God, but, but I was far away from him because of situations that happen. I know God and I have faith in him. But there was just some disconnection. There was just that feeling of just empty, of just no hope. And so Naomi, she, she urges them to go back home. She's telling Orpah and Ruth, don't stay with me. Don't stay with me because everything in my life has turned to dust. She's speaking from a broken heart. And as she walks the road back to Bethlehem, it feels as if there is no future. Saints, I, I know we have all had situations wherein we just think, it, it's this bad, what can I do? It's this, it's gone so bad. It's gone so wrong. I, I, we just feel like everything, Everything is just crumbling right in front of us. But as she took this journey back home, I am reminded of the story that is very parallel to this journey right now. I, I think about the prodigal son. Hmm. I think about the prodigal son. He too must have had similar thoughts as he made that long journey from a far country back to his father's house. He assumed that by his foolish choices, he had forfeited his right to be his father's son. He imagined himself saying these words to his father, Luke 15 verse nine. And I'm not worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. But just as the prodigal son underestimated his father's heart, so Naomi too underestimated our father's heart. Sometimes we, we too underestimate our father. 
Sometimes we think that the choices that we have made have, have taken us far from God. And we end up doubting God's willingness to take us back. Doubting God's willingness to take us back. And so I, I am here literally, I, I am here just as an encourager today. I am here to tell you, don't no more saints. Because he is still, he is still willing to accept you on your return. You don't have to stay in Moab. You can return home at any time that you are ready for your life to change. When Naomi and Ruth finally arrived in Bethlehem, I imagine it was, it was like a news flash. The whole town would have heard about Naomi's return. But she summed up her time in Moab by saying, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. You know, the Almighty, he has been very bitter. He has opposed me. He has afflicted me. The bitter pain Naomi experienced in Moab has bruised her faith, yes. But guess what? Her faith was bruised, but it was not destroyed. Her faith was bruised, but it was not destroyed. She, she had no idea what, what lies ahead. As she believed God has dealt bitterly and harshly. She has no peripheral views. You know, she could only see what was just in front of her. But the, but the wider view and the bigger vision and picture, she wasn't able to see that. And so I say to you, saints, don't give up on God because things have gone badly for you. Don't give up on him because things are not working out how you want them to work out. Yes, Naomi had to take that long journey back to Bethlehem. But thanks be to God, she had the faith to make the long journey. She may have been embarrassed because she left full and returned empty, but... But saints, had Naomi not gone to Moab, listen, listen, had Naomi not gone to Moab, her son wouldn't have married Ruth. And yes, if she didn't go, go to Moab, maybe her husband and her son would still be alive. We don't, we don't know. But if she didn't go to Moab, she probably wouldn't have needed to return to Bethlehem. But that was not the plan. That was not the plan. Naomi was now in connection with Ruth. <laughs> Guess where we're going? She was now in connection with Ruth. And the bigger picture was Ruth was going to marry to who? Yes, Lord. Ruth was now going to marry to Boaz. Look at it unfolding. Unbeknown to Naomi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, God. God, good him, good him, good. Unbeknown to Naomi at this point. <laughs> Unbeknown to Naomi at this point. Ruth and Boaz would have a child. That child, Obed, who would then have a child. You see where I'm going. Who would then have a child called Jesse. And Jesse would now have a child called David. <laughs> if they didn't go to Moab, how? How would this plan unfold? If they didn't go to Moab, how? How would 
David get to slow Goliath? Tell me, God has a plan. We may not see it. We may not know it, but despite of our lack of understanding as to but, but why, you know, this why, why, we must, we must remain steadfast and trust God that he has, he has brought us to it. Somebody, I don't want to say the rest, open up your mic and let me hear that if he has brought us to it, then guess what? Talk to me, saints. Oh, yes. He will bring us through it. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. If he has brought us to it, Amen. then Amen. no Amen. doubt he will, he will take us through it. We've all made foolish choices that put us in bad situations. I have. I have. I know you don't want to hear about it, but I have. And I have no shame to say that I have been foolish because my foolishness has allowed me to testify. My foolishness has allowed me to encourage. My foolishness has allowed me to bring souls closer to God. God, he has a plan for each and every one of us. We've all tried to stop over in Moab. Yes, we've tried to stop over in Moab. You, you might have entered a wrong relationship. We all, we moved when we should have stayed or we, we give up just too soon. Or we said something that, you know, just fractured that wonderful friendship that we had or, or we tried a shortcut and we got ourselves in trouble or, or we, we might have dabbled in, in some sort of sin that we thought we thought we wouldn't get caught we've tried to stop over in moab the, the question is not about whether or not we have seen because we all have seen the question really is know that you have seen what are you going to do about it what are you going to do about it and so naomi naomi decide to return. Naomi decides to return to Bethlehem. She's a bruised believer who sees no hope for a better future, but she has not given up on God. So even though she feels that he has turned against her, she has, she has not given up. And so when it seems that we have done our worst, God, God has and will do his best. When we think we have done our worst, God will do his best. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, this is the song says, the, the song says, he could have come down, but, but our souls, our souls would still be lost. It was pure love and mercy that held him to the cross. It wasn't the nail. It wasn't the nail. It was love and mercy. Another song that I grew up on, it says, he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the earth and set him free. But, but he stayed. He stayed on that cross and died 
for your parents, for your parents, parents, for their parents, parents, parents. He stayed on the cross and died so that you and I could be here today. So that you and I could be present here today. He died that you and I could live. So I say to you saints, don't give up on God because things are going badly for you. Don't turn away because you have made some wrong turns in your life. Our past doesn't determine our future. One of the highest, one of the highest value notes, paper notes we have in the UK is a 50 pound note. And you might have a 50 pound note that is fresh, fresh from the cash point, brand spanking new. And then Brother Bulalani may have another 50 pound note that, you know, it's been around. It's been around, it's battered and it's bruised. It's creased and it's crushed and it's ripped in all different places. <laughs> and Saint Fumi may be offered one of these 50 pound notes. Guess what? She's going to take one because the value, the value, saints, the value, saints, is still the same mm -hmm. the value is still exactly the same so our past doesn't determine our future and as i was reading as you do sometimes i'm on these night shifts that you know i'm having to try to keep myself awake you read i read i came across this quote that says if you have a pulse, you know, you can feel your pulse in so many places. You feel your heart beating. If you have a pulse, then you ought to have a praise. If you have a pulse, then you ought to have a praise. And so I say, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. <laughs> At times you feel like God has forgotten you. You may feel you can't return because of everything that you felt may have gone wrong. Remember this, God has not stopped showing kindness to you. You see, th this is my calling now. This is my calling. He has not stopped showing kindness to you. He hears your heart. And he will do whatever it takes to draw you and pull you closer to him. He calls you by name. Brother Kalani, Saint Fumi, Elder Mokatula, Maui. He's calling you by name. He whispers in your ears and and through your pain, he is willing, he is willing to make you his chosen one. He is knocking, knocking at the door of your heart. And he is pleading with you. He is calling you to come back return unto me return home lay aside your doubts and your fears i encourage you saints while i encourage myself today to open your hearts and let the lord come in the song says, General, I know you know the words. The song says, 
let him in today. He'll come in to stay. Open your hearts. Open your hearts and let the Lord come in. I pray that someone would have found something. I pray that you would have all found your own subjects for yourself from this message that was placed in my heart to pass on to someone. I pray the Lord will, will continue to just bless us, bless us, bless us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.